Okay, welcome everyone to Wonder Wednesday number 62, our Abstract Process Art. Thank you so much for coming today and to our guest, Kyla Givehand, who's going to teach us how to make a book. Um, we were just getting uh, reacquainted and about how um, I was saying how nice it is to see everyone here and how m my goal is, and usually I, I fulfill goals generally, um, that the Capricorn in me wanted to check things off the list. Um, I would, I'm going to try to do a live Wonder Wednesday every season so we can get together and have some fun. So we're talking about abstract process art and how sometimes it's a little bit um, overwhelming to think of creating a finished something. Or maybe we don't know when it's finished. Maybe we don't know if something we've made is finished until a week or a month or three years later. But when we just think of like, oh, I can just do a few steps, do a few processes, and just leave it at that and then walk away, it's kind of freeing. So process art can be a great warm-up for something else. And it doesn't even have to be a warm-up for making art. It could be a warm-up for getting into your work day, something you wanted to write, something you needed to do, but you want to focus your mind. So it's a great warm-up. It can be great to use as a background for something else. You could do some abstract um, process art and then cut a hole in the center and add a picture, make it a picture frame or, or anything really. Make, cut it up and make gift tags out of it. Um, anything like that. It can just be plain fun. It doesn't have to have any, any purpose, no purpose at all because sometimes adding a purpose then it's like, oh, it becomes a thing, it becomes a product. So process over product today. Um, and with, with process art, it can be fun to add a theme. So this is fall. So I'm giving what we'll be doing in a few minutes a bit of a fall, folly type spin. Wait, is anyone in the Southern Hemisphere? No, everybody's Northern Hemisphere here, right? Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we'll, we'll go fall. But Southern Hemisphere people go spring. But seasonal theme or spin, um, a theme of anything, leaves, flowers, food, um, color scheme, theme, or, or none, totally random. Um, I was watching this comedian, uh, well, I was trying to sleep and my partner Sean was watching this comedian and he was talking about how his wife had passed recently, but her, the thing she took with him, I was like, that's great. He, he, her sort of philosophy was the world is chaos, so just be kind. And um, I was like, you know what? Like, yeah, sometimes just like relax. Things seem chaotic. Oh, just relax into it and go with that flow and just, you know, focus on kindness and being kind to yourself is giving yourself a little bit of creative time, giving yourself the permission to not have to be product oriented for once or not have to check things off the list. So yeah, do something totally random. Um, so that's a little bit of my philosophy on, on, process art. And when I was in graduate school, they always said, trust the process. I went to a Dewey in school and that's very Montessori too. You know, we were always telling parents, trust the process. It's, it might be different than what you're used to, but it's tried and true. Trust it. So sometimes we just have to, it's, it's a little hard <laughs> to, to let go of some of that control, but trusting the process. So trust me today when I lead you through the process and, and let's have a little fun. So Kyla is going to kick us off. We're going to make a book um, or a folded book. So you're ready, Kyla? I'm going to put you in the in where'd you go? In the spotlight. Uh oh, she disappeared. Here I am. Oh, where are you? Can you put yourself in the spotlight? Oh, there you are. Oh, you're <laughs> okay. You're in the spotlight. Hi, everybody. Good morning or afternoon, I guess, depending on where you are. Uh oh, can you hear me, Kelly? I can hear yes? you. Yes. Okay, good. My thing, I'm getting weird messages from Zoom. <laughs> it's the gremlins are following. I don't know what's happening. Okay, this is weird. Slow, I've slow, never slow. seen it say that before. It all looks good on this end. Okay, good. All right, well, then I won't stress too much over whatever it's telling me. <sighs> How's everybody doing? Good to see so many faces I recognize and some new ones that I don't. Hello. Um, okay, so 
we go, we are going to attempt to make um, one of my favorite little books here. So I think some of you have been around me <laughs> long enough to know that I like these little one page books. So I'm using a gigantic, ginormous piece of paper, but you can use any size paper you want for this. I'm just gonna tear a sheet that's clean out of here. And I think I did this, some, some of you who took the very first version, and this was a long time ago, this is like three years maybe ago. Um, I did a class called One Page Wonders where I taught like, I don't know, eight different kinds of books you can make with um, using one sheet of paper. It's probably time for me to revamp that class and run it again. I don't know. We'll see. So I was trying to get my camera, my second camera to work and it, it's not behaving. I don't know what's going on with me and Zoom today. It's making me the host. It won't let me use my camera. <laughs> um, it's being a little finicky. So, and Kyla, do you have any for this book recommendations on types of paper? Like I was going to use drawing paper. Could you use heavier duty paper, watercolor paper? Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, that's a great question, Kelly. Thank you for even bringing that up because anytime you make a book, it doesn't matter if it's like a folded book or a sewn book or anytime. It's always about what you plan to do with the book. Like what do you plan to do in it? Um, is it just for writing? Are you going to use watercolor? Are you going to use acrylic paint? So I always think of ahead a little bit. Um, sometimes I make a book on the fly and I don't think about it. Um, I just see a piece of paper and start folding. Uh, but sometimes I am, most times I'm thinking ahead like, okay, this book, my intention for this book is this. I'm going to use it for beautiful watercolor florals, or I'm going to make, um, I'm just going to use it to journal with my pen. Um, and then I even think, oh, is it going to just be fountain pen or what am I going to write? So it really depends on what your end result is, what you're hoping for in the end. So with that said, if you're going to just be using pens and maybe markers, right, you want something that can hold that. So I would say if you're going to just be doing sketching, Drawing paper, sketching paper, those are fine. Um, some drawing papers out there can even take a very light, light, light watercolor wash, like really light. Like you can't go all spray bottle water all over it. Um, so those, in those instances, yeah, if you're one of those people, you're fine with your paper buckling, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I would say it really depends on the paper. So my favorite papers are mixed media. I think mixed media paper is like the lightest pound paper that I will go with. Um, sorry, Kelly, could we mute everybody? Like, is it possible to mute everyone? I'm hearing, I'm hearing myself twice. I think it's because I'm somebody else's unmuted. Maybe. Let's see. No, I'm still hearing it. I don't know why that is, but hopefully you guys aren't hearing the echo. I just hear myself twice. <laughs> It's probably just the tech gremlins tripping, tripping out. Um, okay. Kyla, I did, everybody is muted. Um, oh, now you're muted. <laughs> okay. And also for people to add, since this was kind of like a, y'all didn't know what we were doing. I said, mm -hmm. just keep it loose, come free. I planned for that in mind. Mm -hmm. And any painting, I sort of kept the idea that it, it wouldn't, we're not, any process instructions I'm going to give you aren't going to be like cover your paper in water or cover your paper in gesso or something. They're all light, lightweight things. So if at home you're trying to choose your paper right now or you just chose drawing paper like me, a little bit of dry brush, watercolor maybe, but if you choose, not even required. So, you know, I'm glad you said that, Kelly, too, because here's the other thing, y'all. Um, Sometimes you don't know what a paper, how, what a paper is going to do and how you're going to like what it does until you play with it. So I suggest try all different kinds of paper. I think I've tried every kind of paper there is to try out there. I mean, everything from, this is going to blow your mind when I say this, you know, the, the, the seat covers out of bathrooms, out of public restrooms. I have done jelly plate printing on those. 
right? So I'm, I'm saying that to say, like, if it's paper, try it. Like, just see what it does. <laughs> and that's really a great addition to process. You know, just yeah. have some fun with it. Don't think of it. Like, when you had the toilet seat covers, you probably weren't like, oh, this is going to be, like, hanging framed on my wall. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely not. But I was just like, huh, this is paper. I wonder what it, it's kind of like deli paper in a little bit. I'm going to see, I'm going to snag a couple of these and see what happens. Um, and then it became collage in, in something else. Right. So I'm saying that to say, if you've got, if all you have right now is printer paper, you, we can do it with that. Like try it with that and see what happens. Um, I get some really cool results from printer paper. Sometimes it's totally an epic fail. But there are other times when I've done really neat things with just plain old printer paper. So I say, use what you have, keep it simple, um, don't stress too much over the paper. But when you get to a place where you're like, okay, I want to make something that's going to be a gift for someone, it's a, it feels a little precious to me. I say then that's when you start really thinking about it. Like that's when you move towards your water, watercolor papers. That's when you start thinking about like, brands, right? Strathmore, Canson, Fabriano, right? You start looking at the different kinds of paper. But I think for the most part, if you're doing it for yourself and it's like a part of your creative practice just to, um, like, like Kelly was saying, it's just about the process. Like it's just learning. Then I say experiment. I have journals that have different kinds of paper all sewn together into one journal. And when I say different, I mean everything from deli paper to a doily to um, craft paper, scrapbooking paper, everything. And then I just open it up, pick a page and see what happens, right? So that would be my suggestion. Just try try whatever you've got. But I'm totally like, oh, Kelly, Fabriano, it's like, it's like putting a beautiful piece of chocolate in your mouth, right? It's just, it's like the, the, the dark chocolate of of um paper it's just it's so dreamy and the art supply store where my parents live there's a big art school art school there they've been having it on sale so cheap i'm like mm. i'm in trouble i've got so many pads stocked <laughs> yes you are in trouble and if i ever see one of those pads you better watch out okay because <laughs> i'll be like what pad kelly you didn't have a, you didn't have a fabriano pad over here i don't know what you mean um okay so let's make a journal um, and I'm just going to, you know, hold up and demo for you. Now I'll tell you what I use, but you can, I'll give you some alternatives. The creasing, because you're making a folded book, the creasing matters. And what I mean by that is you want to get really crisp crease. Like you want it to be really, you know, a really good crease. So what I'm going to be using, I'm going to start out just using my fingers, right? Using my thumbnail to do it. But then I'm going to bring in a bone folder. And I say that as I look around my desk and I'm like, where's my bone folder? <laughs> I promise you, people, things are like disappearing off my desk. Hang on. Goodness gracious, gracious, gracious. Okay. And you can always use, use, if you don't have a bone folder, you can always use pencil or pen. Yep. And that's what I was going to say. Alternatives to a bone folder. The back of your scissors, right? You can just use this part to, to you to make it thin. Um, some of you um, might have, um, I even have used, I'm looking for it, don't see it, plastic ruler, right? You can use a plastic ruler. Like Kelly said, you can use a pencil. Um, and some of you can get really good creases with your nails. So I'll try that too. You can use um, key hotel key cards, old credit cards, right? All sorts of things to help you get a crease, okay? So we're gonna start. And we're actually going to fold the long edges of your paper together to make like a little taco. All right. So long edge to long edge. That's your first fold. And the thicker your paper, the more aggressive, assertive you have to be with the crease. You have to say, I am the boss. <laughs> okay, so I'm just getting a nice crease. And I even flip my paper over and crease on both sides of the paper just so I can, just so I know I've got a really good crease. Okay, I'm going to wait just, with each step, I'm going to wait just a little, a second or two just to make sure everybody's together and we got it all done. So right now you should have a piece of paper that looks like this. 
Okay, so just fold it in half. And then we're gonna open it. Okay. And once you have that, we're gonna go short edge to short edge. And it doesn't um it doesn't really matter too much which which way you have it, whether it's like this or like this. But for some reason I always kind of do it this way. So I, my my fold is facing me. And then I'm going to go short edge to short edge. Okay. And this is going to give me four sections. Again, just crease that really beautifully. And And then, if you've done, again, if you've done um, these kind of books with me before, some of this stuff is just like, it's the same thing over and over. So now you've got four, four sections here. Okay. And we're gonna take, now we've got this like peak here, right? We're gonna take our two short edges and we're gonna fold into the center. We're gonna fold towards this peak. So if I had it standing like this, it'd be a little peak here. Okay, so we're going to fall into the peak. And I'll show you this each step of the way. So, and just because you're on mute, if you have questions, do unmute yourself and chime in or, or type them in the chat if you prefer. Yeah, and stop me because I um, all I can see is myself on the screen. So, <laughs> so if you um, need to stop me, just you know, come off mute or get Kelly's attention or something so that I don't go too far ahead. So I did one side into the center. Now I'm going to do the second side into the center. Now, one of the reasons that I am like being really kind of like, you got to get all your creases is because um, the book that we're going to make, we are going to tear and or cut. I'm a tearer, but you, if you're somebody who prefers to cut, you can absolutely cut. Um, we're going to be tearing or cutting a piece, uh, one of these uh, creases. And it's easier to do if your crease is really like substantial, like you've really creased it. Okay, so that's why I'm making a, like a big deal about the creasing. All right, so once you've done that, you should kind of look at your paper, you should have eight sections. Okay. Eight sections with uh, lines in them. And I'm kind of thinking about something here because there is a, um, do you guys hear, I swear I hear myself is like driving me bonkers. Give me one there's, second to figure out what's going on with my sound. One there's, second. There's no, I don't hear an echo here if that helps. Okay, you do not hear an echo, but I do and it's crazy talk. Okay, give me one second. Karen, um, the kids do the same, the hot dog fold and the hamburger fold. The kids at my workshops, they insist. They're like, no, you mean, because I'm trying to say vertical and horizontal and teach them these geometry terms. And they're like, no, no, hot dog and hamburger. I'm like, veggie dog and veggie burger. <laughs> I love it, veggie dog and veggie burger. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't hear it anymore. Awesome. Okay. Last step. And I wish I, this is where I need my down facing camera because I feel like I'm going to confuse you all and me. But here's what happens, right? So we've got these sections. Let's see if I can <laughs> get myself in the camera, right? <sighs> okay, there we go. We are going to cut or tear. We're going to start by doing a tear from, from here up to, the, to this line. Okay, that's the first cut or tear. Okay, so let's all do that first and then we'll do the next one. And I literally, if you have like a straight edge or uh, if you have, if you're, you know, cutting with an X-Acto knife, that's great. 
If you're using scissors, that's fine. If you're like me, I like a, like I said, I like a torn edge. I, I usually just put a, a ruler right down next to it and just tear against the ruler. Um, but I'm, I'm actually gonna go old school to just tear it without a ruler right now. And we are tearing, we're cutting vertically up to the center line. Okay, cool. Yep, just like that. So you want one cut right here. Okay, then our next cut is going to go from here to here. So right across. And I'll do it and then I'll show it. And you're gonna stop. You're only gonna tear one square like that, right? You're not taking it out, it's still there. But all you did was go across. Okay, so there it is, whole. And then we just went across. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And that one can be tricky, <laughs> depending on if you're like lefty, righty. Um, so take your time with tearing it. So it's kind of like making little barn doors. Yes, ma'am, exactly. This is called the French door structure. Oh. Okay. So now what you should have is a big gaping hole. A big hole right in the center, okay? Okay, now, when you have that and both are done, and I'm gonna pause for a second, I think I, I think I can go into gallery view, yes, and I can see everybody, great! Okay, I'm gonna see if anybody's waving at me like, wait, do that again, what did you do? Hold on, that was crazy. All right, I don't see anybody waving at me. All right, I see smiling faces, that's a good thing. All right, so now, I'm gonna talk you through this and then I'm gonna pick up my paper and show you. So place your paper in front of you so that the open doors are at the bottom closest to you. Place your paper on your table right in front of you so that the open doors are facing up and they're closest to you, okay? Then take your hands and just open the doors out. So go to the left and the right with the doors, open them out. Then pick up your paper and it's gonna fold automatically over like this, right? So if your paper's laying down, it's like this, pick it up and it's gonna fold. And then you're just gonna close it like this, push it together. Okay. And then lay it down and just reconstitute your, your um, creases. And now I'm gonna give you one last step. I'm just going back over my creases, making sure everybody's doing what they're behaving, doing what they're supposed to do. Hang on. Okay, little book. And then I think I need to flip this a different way. Yes. Okay. So let me see how to explain this. Okay, so what you should have, once it flips over like this, once it flips over and you close it, you're gonna, it's gonna be weird, but you're gonna go to the back of the book. You want the book to orient like an actual book would orient, okay? And right now, you're gonna have a, a big hole right here in the middle, and that's fine. We want that because what's it, what, it, what it's going to do is as we work with this book and we get to here, right, we get to this open space, we're gonna notice that we can actually flip it open and start doing all sorts of other things to it, right? So now we've got this piece. Um, so this book, let me, let me rephrase, this book is multifunctional. Depending on you, your personality, how you want to work with the book, you can also take this book, if my hands will let me, 
Let me do it on the table and then I'll just hold it up. I hate that my camera's not working. So if you start to treat it kind of like origami or like, oh, I'm going to fold it back on itself this way, right? You'll end up with pages that do, that kind of look like this, where you've got, see how I've got two little sections here that I can then flip that up. So you can leave this like this. You can glue these pages down if you don't want them opening on you, right? So you could glue it down. And then I'm just, all I'm doing is taking it and turning it towards you all so you can see it better. Then what we have is an actual like book that opens to reveal just a full page spread here. Okay, so what I'm saying to you is Sit with the book for a second, put it in front of you, and decide how you want your book to function because it really is up to you. You can have it function traditionally where you open it and the pages flip like this. You could put glue here to actually close this so that it functions like an actual book or double-sided tape, glue, double-sided tape, whatever you got. Um, or you can decide that you want your book and all I did is take it and flip it this way. Really all I'm doing is flipping it in different directions and that is gonna change the experience you have with the book. The way it opens, the way it, um, the way it functions, what you glue, what you don't glue, right? So before you glue anything, if you decide to glue, um, decide how you actually want the book to function, okay? So that's the thing about book art. When people start talking about book art, it's about form and function. It's like, okay, I've got this thing. What can I make it do? Um, so sometimes the book can be interactive. You can say, you can disorient the reader. And if it comes this way, they're like, oh, why is this book going in this direction? What's happening here, right? So you can play with the experience that the reader has simply by doing something like flipping the book over and seeing what you get, right? So I'm gonna leave the decision up to you all how you decide, but I will share with you um, what I plan to do because I kind of have a, a little idea of what Kelly's doing with us today. Um, and so I like to have spread like uh, spreads and I like the element of surprise in books. And so for me, I would like this book to do, you know, front cover, it's going to open, it's going to open here and then it's also going to open here and give me something. So sometimes I know Kelly does things where it's like a leaf that goes up, like it's like a thing that climbs. And so it has, it needs more space going this way, right? Sometimes it needs more space going this way, right? So now I've got like an accordion. I can have something that goes hmm, across, right? So I'm going to leave my book with no glue until I see where Kelly is taking me. And then I'm going to, um, decide if I want to do more. The other thing about all one page books, if you make multiples and you glue them together back to front, you get more of that, right? It starts to build on the book. Okay. So I'll stop talking and see if there are any questions. If anybody's wondering like, okay, what else could I do with this book? Or, you know, the other thing is stand the book up um, in front of you, that always helps you see it in a different way. Like if you stand it up, like if, if this were standing on my table, I would automatically see where some of my spreads are. Like I'd see, oh, there's a little pocket in there, right? Because this book has a little pocket right here. I could actually sew in another book into this if I wanted to. Hide a book in there if I wanted to, right? So lots of options. You know, what I discovered too is you, if you look at the back side, like when you were showing us your mm -hmm. would be front cover and back cover and open it from the back side, you could hide, like the picture could continue not mm -hmm. only from the front cover and back cover, but through this little secret section in the middle. Exactly. If you flipped it around. Yes, 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 yes. And I, you know what, Kelly, um, something you just said made me think of um, this idea of putting <coughs> another either another signature in here like you could sew a signature into the back of the book so it almost becomes like a third book a book inside of a book kind of thing 
Um, you also could do a really cool flower fall page and it would open out into this. Um, like a pop-up book. Yes, if there's time, I'll show that at the end. If not, we'll, we'll do oh, that that's pretty cool one, Wonder Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, we can't give away all the secrets at once, although <laughs> I'm like, whoa, we'll make time. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is everybody ready? Everybody has their book? I'm going to do mine, The like if you open your book all the way and you get four four squares. But again, this is process. This is your your choice. So I'm I'm going to just go that way so I have this long because we are going to be flipping it around. But when I say flip around, if you want to flip a page, literally, you know, these are just suggestions of ideas for mark making on your page. So you can do it however you like in whatever fold pocket whatever like Kyla said. Um, although I'm honestly, I'm really tempted to do it since I sort of like my brain got wrapped around because Sabrina said I might want a pocket and I was saying, oh, I love pockets and fold outs only a lot of times I don't think of them. Like, I don't know why I just think like book, open it properly, like a book, like a little more formal, formally about it. But there's no reason unless, you know, there's no reason for that. There's no reason you have to be like that. But anyway, I'm still going to do the accordion. Y'all do whatever you like. Um, hey, Kelly, can I say one quick thing about Sabrina's suggestion about a pocket? Yes. yes, please. So if you guys are thinking about a pocket and you know you've got those, um, I call them pants if they're standing this way. like They just look like pants to me. Um, so if you've got those little pants, that's a great pocket. And if you just flip your book upside down and all you need for a pocket, right, is to just seal up the sides, leave the top open, put a tiny strip of glue or a tiny strip of um, double-sided tape right on the on those two edges, four edges, I guess, really, close it up, and then you've got a little pocket there, and you could do that twice because you've got two sets of pants in this book. Yeah, so Very Sabrina, cool. that's a great suggestion. Um, okay, so I, I have... So you wanna take me out of the spotlight? Oh, sorry, <laughs> no. Hi, <laughs> okay, I'll put me back in. Um, I have, I'll show you what supplies I have. I don't know if I'll use them all, but I brought watercolor crowns. Don't laugh at the way I say it. I tried to say it hybrid so y'all wouldn't make fun of me. Crowns, watercolor crowns. Let's be true to ourselves. <laughs> watercolor crayons. Is not how I say it. <laughs> I love it. Watercolor pencil. Ooh, watercolor pencil. Just regular color pencils. Prisma Micron pens in a few colors. An old palette of paint. That so I figured I limited myself with my color choices here. Just sometimes it's fun to put parameters that you're kind of not in control with. And then I have a few ah, nature items I collected from the backyard this morning. Okay. So feel free to bump through materials, mediums, pen to paper, I mean pen to paint. And with the watercolor pencils, I figured even if I just used them as regular colored pencils, it would give me the freedom in the process at some point if I felt like adding a light, a light wash. Because I did use drawing paper, so it would be light. And I thought too, let me give the secret away, one of the secrets away. I've never tried to make a nature rubbing using these watercolor crowns. So maybe, then with a very light wash, maybe we'll come across something there. Let's experiment, that's why we're doing this. Okay, everybody ready? Yeah, thumbs up? Okay, first, step one, draw three leaf shapes. They can be the same, they can be different leaves, they can be wherever on your paper in your book, they can be in paint, pencil, pen, whatever you like. And they can even be in invented. They don't have to be 
leaf color. So three leaf shape. They can be different sizes too. I often will start with the leaf shape. I just love that shape. Okay. Everybody good? Number two, add some dots in whatever medium you like. They can be filled in, they can be, they can be hollow. You can add one, you can add 10, whatever you like. I'm actually gonna do dots in, in a, two different mediums. I'm gonna actually try a little bit of water. I did some, oh, I'm not gonna show, show anyone. We don't wanna spread, I, you know process. We don't need to see other people's things. So get messy, get tidy, however you, however you feel like it. Just thinking process over product. So I'm going to go a little bit quickly. Okay, number three, turn your page 90 degrees. Change your perspective a little bit. Number four, and we're going with fall theme here, so draw three fall fruits. Same or different, realistic, not realistic, any three, any size, whatever you like. And, and fruit, remember like squash are technically fruit, so fruit, veggies. And now keeping your paper, that same other angle, or turning the page at this point, if you like. Oh, Sunshine says three leaf shapes. Oh yes, so Sunshine, three leaf shapes, and then dots. Oh, I'll type in here the order. I'll, I'll put in the chat. It's it, check in the chat um, for the steps I've added. 
Okay, everybody good with their fall fruits or would you like another, another minute? Let's see, give me thumbs up if you're good. After you do three fall fruits, add some lines, squiggly lines, big lines, small lines, active lines, quiet lines, any kind of lines you like. And the lines can also be different colors, remember. And different medium. Don't have to stick put with any one thing. Okay. Now, turn your page 90 degrees again. This time it will be upside down from how you started. And this time, if you have some nature items with you, choose a couple and see about making a rubbing or adding some, using it in some way to add texture. So maybe that means that you put paint on the item and stamp it. Maybe that means you do a rubbing in the more traditional sense of like a leaf rubbing. I don't know. See what happens. And this may require, I just discovered, unfolding parts of your book. So that would mean the texture is like carrying over in cool and interesting ways. If you don't have anything to make a rubbing, you could just add drawing type texture marks, textural, textural marks. Sometimes textural is a funny word to say.
Okay, and at this point, add something. Maybe it's water, maybe it's pen. Add something you have not added before to your page as far as like a medium goes. And after you do, tilt your page around. Like maybe you've added water and it makes drippiness. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> tilt your page around just in case if you've added water, see what, see what the drips could bring about. See how that might blend with any ink, perhaps, if you didn't have a water fast ink. See how some colors might blend? I don't know. Shake it around if you have to. See what happens. Maybe nothing happens. If nothing happens and you want something to happen, add more of something. Or rub it, you can try rubbing with paper towel, all sorts of different ways to get things to move around. See how some colors might blend. And then add some words or letters, um, you could do a quote, you could do a name, you could do, or you could just do random letters. They don't even have, it could be Chinese characters, you know, just some sort of lettery type language image. I'm gonna type into the chat that, um, Next directions. And after that, turn your page 90 degrees again. See where we're kind of working away in a circle here.
and now draw three or paint three more leaves. And finally, turn your paper another 90 degrees, and this should have you back at the, um, the way you started. Once you're back to the orientation that you started with, take a look at it, see if it calls for anything else, um, and add anything your imagination tells you to add. It could be a repeat of something you already did, like, oh, I need some more dots or more lines. It could be something totally different. It could be coloring in an area, um, whatever, whatever, whatever you like. And don't think it's, it's so easy at this point to be like, oh, I don't want to mess it up. I'm not adding anything else. Process. Add it. See what happens. So we tell the kids, there's no mistakes. Just turn it into something else. Part of me didn't want to add anything. I said that kind of for my own benefit. So from had, adding too much water, my center broke. So I'm assuming I'll just let that dry and stitch it up later? Or? Yeah, that's what I would do, or, or put a little tape on it later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, maybe it would be a fun thing to stitch it. Use some fun ribbon. Yeah, see? The, the things you want to expect, you don't expect, sometimes turn out to be the... Just the thing you were looking for. Okay, let's do about one more minute. So I do want to have a little time for people to show. If they want to show, it's always optional. Hey everybody, feeling feeling processed, feeling lost in the process, relaxed into the process, trusting the process. All right. So mine is a lovely mess. Ah, of leaves and rubbings, and I would say the rubbings of the dollar leaf I did with the watercolor crown 
they're kind of cool. Like it kind of blended it away, but I think if you really mashed it, you could keep some of those lines. Would anyone like to go? I'm gonna take all y'all off mute. Oh. Does anybody wanna jump in? Anybody wanna show theirs or something they maybe discovered in the process? You don't have to. So yeah, I'll share mine. I just um, I'm adding my last little thing to it, and then okay. I'll share. Inside a leaf. Inside a leaf. <laughs> One more leaf. Oh, I hear we're adding leaves. My favorite tape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can. I know everyone loves to be in the spotlight. I'm happy to put you in it. <laughs> <laughs> I did leaves and seashells and star fruit was what I chose. Oh, nice. Um, because star fruit are fall, fall, my favorite fall fruit. And I think it will be interesting to see fall colors from different regions, you know, the, the color palette. The, the fall color palette in Florida is still pretty bright. And I did a little bit experimenting at the last I added this black because I wanted some dark to pop it out but I did it in color pencil and in watercolor crown and I smeared it but I couldn't remember which was which because they look the same so it went a little bonusy smeary and the watercolor pencil didn't blend but some of the crown got mixed in but and I added F's and E's in cursive because I really like writing those cursive. <laughs> but, and it's kind of like wind, I was thinking, because down here, a, a sort of a telltale of fall is wind. Um, it's when the wind starts up and it kind of doesn't stop again till like April, um, wind off the ocean. And so that F's and E's, they have that real windy feeling to me. Well, so I'm kind of working with the fall colors here in Canada, so I used, Ooh. I used, um, well, the leaves. <laughs> so you can see I'm going to actually still ink on this, so I'll probably use this rest of this ink on something else before it dries out. But I stuck to the colors that are kind of, I will go back in and add some more reds, and there was fruit in there but they're gone <laughs> that's okay did you trace did you make rubbings of the leaf and then spray around it for the negative i did um, more like stamping and spraying around it and then going around it with an ink intense oh cool <coughs> shadow but i think now because my skin is so wet i think i'll just wait a bit and add more very cool. The colors here are, of course, beautiful, all colors. So I'm going to add some more of those colors in here. Oh, yeah, real warm and rich. Mm -hmm. I love the veins. Penny, and... what's hanging above you? What's, what's hanging, hanging on your ceiling? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> A uh, work in progress. Cool. <laughs> it looks awesome. <laughs> I don't have any more room around me, so I've gone up. <laughs> so yeah, there's lots of pieces of tied cloth, you know, dyed cloth. I draw a lot on cloth, so if I'm not using it right away, I hang it so that it's there for when I need it. <laughs> it's ready. Just grab it and add it. <laughs> yeah, well, I have it looks like a party. <laughs> it looks like what? A party. A party. Oh, yeah. Ready no, for it's, party. Uh, it's the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, our art I laundry. laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, do you want to show? Yeah. I'll show this one really quick. Um, oh. 
It's already it's already winter here, so it was fun to remember fall. Oh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of snow puppies. We have like this much snow. Oh, but I wrote um lovely. I wrote celebrate harvest, count blessing, and embrace change. And I was gonna show quickly that I did a little bit different folding that I thought was kind of cool. Um, yeah. Let me show this. So if you take your the regular way we folded it, so this is the back cover, and then you fold this middle part the other direction. Then you end up with like a folded page and your single, your original cover. And then this opens up here. But then there's the other thing. Can I show you? So, oh, that's kind of cool. Option. So you've got a, a nice yeah. flap. Organize that flap. Yeah, and you could put little secret books in there, too. Yeah. Turn it off. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I here's love Ida's. That. Oh my gosh, love there it, love it, love it. Yeah, there's Ida, a leaf. That's gorgeous. There's a leaf inside a leaf, inside a leaf, inside a leaf. Or I was wondering about that. I heard you say that, and I wanted to see what. I Pardon? love yeah. that. Concentric leaves. No. No. Thanks, you guys. Very cool. Always a pleasure to see you, Karen and Ida. Beautiful. Anybody else want to jump in? I'll jump in, but I'm still in process. Hey, that's what this is all about. <laughs> oh, there oh. I am. So I just, I didn't have any materials and I just had a piece of copy paper. That's okay. So, yeah, that's okay. So I just, uh, ah, wait for me. <laughs> I'm behind, but I'll be there soon. Hey, it's just a process. There's no behind. You That's got it. That's right. <laughs> or how about this way? Yeah. I've been I so have hooked a on brush. So I used a bottle brush to be my paintbrush. Oh, perfect. <laughs> that even adds more looseness and more, you know, just processy. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. I'm not done, but I'm started. Keep on going. Thank you for sharing. I love sunshine. I love how it looks like a storyboard. It's like yeah. a, uh, each one has its own. <laughs> it does. Like yeah. It's a little fruit story. It's a storyboard for your backyard. <laughs> it is. <laughs> sunshine has an amazing garden. P.S. Everyone. <laughs> So I had some, um, oh, I'll show you my butternut squash. It's probably going to be giant. <laughs> she has the bounty of 10 gardens. This volunteered out of my compost. Wow. wow. I wow. have like eight of them. Nice. They tried to take over my garden. They were <laughs> going up the hill. <laughs> I love, you know, free vegetables from your compost. It's awesome. Heck yeah. And the volunteers are always the toughest. They are. Yum. Yum. Ingrid, do you want to show yours? You want me to put you in the spotlight? Okay, Ingrid, show us your book. Oh, she used purple paper with, you did sort of a reverse. Very cool. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I love it. And Ingrid, did you, what's the pink? Is that, did you use color pencil or did you like bleach out the paper? Oh, jelly roll pen. Good thinking. Good thinking. There's jelly. It's always time for jelly rolls. <laughs> Donovan, you want to show? I, I don't know oh. if you can see it. It's all like a mess. <laughs> oh, we got two people. Hold one second, Sabrina. No, no problem. I'll put you oh! in. The oh, nice. Oh, that's really cool. I yeah. love that rubbing. That's awesome. Yeah. Ocean. Wave, wave. Those lines are very wavy at the beach. Uh huh. Oh, um, and I think he might have glued his too. 
Mm-hmm. Ah, you guys are fast. I know. How many guys letters? <clears throat> wow. wow, it's like a full. It's like your book is full, Donovan. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. I know he finished. Nice. nice. Oh, palm tree. <laughs> palm tree. Totally fall in Florida. Fall in Florida. <laughs> okay, Sabrina, you ready? Yeah, it's a little bit. Oh, you had real paint. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Love that red. Yeah, that very red. cool. Yeah, we, we have this red in the trees right now. I, I love these colors. I love how everyone's fall palette so far has been different. I love it. I tried to, to uh, rub these on the page, but it just it, it, uh, didn't work. I don't know. In this lighting, it looks like it worked. <laughs> to me, it looks like it worked. Right, like, like this white space, I tried to see the was the leaf, but... No, oh, I like it. That's great. Have and that color. is herbs in German? Hmm? Herbs? Is it does that say herbs in German or plants? Like the word you wrote? Uh, it's it's like a fall or autumn. Oh, in German. Oh, cool. Helps. Oh, now we learned a new word. Yeah. Thank you. Very cool. Anybody else want to jump in? I don't want to like uh, uh, take too much of your time because I know everybody has stuff. Karen, did you, are you talking, did you want to? Do you mean we can't stay here all day, Kelly? <laughs> I know. I can keep like feeding out like ideas. You'll just keep filling pages, filling pages. <laughs> I mean, I will share mine. I have absolutely no color on my page. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and I'm still kind of like, I don't know. I got carried away, I think. Ah! But I love it. Okay, so I'm going to show what I have here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Go to somebody else if they want to share, and then I'll share mine last. Okay. Anybody yeah. else? Annie, okay. Yeah. Um, mine's just, I just don't it up like that. Mine, the fall colors are not quite right because I only had some Crayola, not Crayola, near colors. So I just use what I had. And then I tried to draw some acorns, but ended up like a deformed pixie. So, I... <laughs> hey, um, the words I put was the season of mist and mellow fruitfulness from Pete. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. But uh, I'm going to say otherwise. It's just scribbles. I, I really like how the colors are like bleeding towards the center of each one and then it's like light in the middle. I like that. Yeah, that was just because I threw some water on it. Some, some water. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got very much stuff here. That effect is my favorite way to use watercolor pencils or watercolor crowns. That bleeding it a little towards the center and then leaving it. That's my favorite effect with those. And I love how a lot of y'all have had acorns. I really wanted to have an acorn, but didn't have any. (laughs) I was going to say, I haven't got any acorns, but like I said, the acorn wasn't very successful. Oh, I liked it though. Yeah. And I I haven't got any leaves or anything with me here. So they're all... But it's all exactly successful because it's process, not product. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. So everything is totally successful because if you engaged in the process, success. (laughs) Okay, Kyla, you ready? Okay, she's up. Sorry, yeah, I'm ready. Let me just get this one. Hang on. One day I'm going to remember that my, my, the sun shifts at a certain time and then it goes all wonky in my lighting. Okay, so I don't know what's the top of the top anymore, but because I wrote the word fall, I'm going to say this is the top. <laughs> so I just did, I'm going to go back in with watercolor on this. So. Kyla's an ink master. <laughs> 
I don't know. I have this thing. I have. I can't break out of it. Like start with with black lines and then fill it in with color. So my color will come next. Did you use um, fingerprints for the red no, dots? I, no, that's those are um color pencil. Oh. Yeah. It's like the only color. So the only color I have on here is color pencil for now, but I'm gonna come back in with another color. Um, and then thank you for saying um, fall fruits. Cause I was like, oh, figs. I love figs during the fall. Like they're like my favorite in a smoothie. We make shakes with them. I eat them just, I sneak and eat them. And Dana's like, I thought we had like a whole thing of figs. I was like, I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> so I did, um, I tried to draw figs there. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, and then, oh my gosh, pumpkin. Kelly, you gotta teach me an easier way to draw a pumpkin. That thing took me forever. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, yeah. funny I do a kids fall fruits drawing workshop every year we do like a Iroquois Thanksgiving with with the Montessori school here and I teach them to draw a different and pumpkin was last year so I have a, a quick quick pumpkin drawing <laughs> I made it so yay thank you I love this and I was thinking too about this book structure Kelly for your um draw yourself back to nature 30 day grid that you do I'm uh -huh. like this would be a cool place to like have your grid right in the center of your book and then everything else is you know um on the on the outer pages or the other pages but like boom right in the center you got your whole 30 days oh that would be um, fun and then you have like your, your own book days. around it yeah like your 30 day grid right in the center i was thinking about that as we were doing it very fun see there's all these ideas that's the beauty of process because when you just like let yourself relax from the product and just have fun with the process all these other ideas come up to you and and like kyla said like you experiment with you know maybe it didn't more, like, yeah. the paper did something you didn't expect you know and then you're like oh that's cool i'm gonna use that again all right so um I just want to thank everyone for coming. Sorry, we went about 15 minutes over, but I hope everybody had a good time. And um, I'm so glad to see you all and hope everyone's fall is going really well and hope you're inspired to play with the process this fall and winter and all the time. We let go of product-oriented mindset all the time and just let the process relax us. And sometimes, not necessarily maybe when we make a book, but if you have a piece of paper, then make yourself like throw it in the campfire or put it in the recycle. So you're like, I'm not keeping it. I don't care how cool it looks or cut it up into bits to use for something else, but just go tell yourself full process, no matter what, it's going away after. And that, that's a little hard sometimes, but <laughs> it can be really fun too. So thank you everyone. I'll have this replay up on the blog with all the instructions typed out if you wanna do it again on your own. And um, it's great to see you. Always feel free. Know you can always email me with any questions through my website. You can always contact me on Instagram. I love to hear from you. I love to see your pictures. You can post pictures of what you made on Instagram with at, at Wings Worms Wonder, hashtag Wings Worms Wonder so I can see what you make. Um, and yeah. I hope everyone has a great day. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly, for inviting yep. me. Yes. So I'm so sorry. God, yes. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Kyla, for showing up, of course, coming and teaching us all these books. Just when you think you're like, oh, I know the folded books, out she comes with like another really cool <laughs> one. That's why I was like, make any folded book. I know you, you know. They're all in your brain. Let us let us have them. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Bye. See you.